This is news now reaching you live from Iban TV News Studio in Lagos, Nigeria. Coming up. President Mamadou Buhari receives briefing from security chiefs and heads of security agencies. Civil society organizations condemn federal inland revenue service over its decision to impose taxes on social media activities. Federal High Court in Ibadan or your state capital commenced hearing in the suit instituted against the federal government by Sunday Adeyemo, popularly known as Sunday Igbo. British Airways resumes Nairobi London flights bringing to an end to a dispute that has lasted nearly five months. Many thanks for joining us on News Now. Here are some stories we are tracking at this hour. My name is Margaret Abraha. The President of Nigeria, Mama Dubari, is receiving briefings from the Chief of Defense Staff, Service Chiefs and Inspector General of Police, and other heads of security agencies at the Presidential Villa in Abuja. Also attending the meetings are Ministers of Defense, Bashi Magashi, Justice Abubakar Malami, Police Affairs, Magari Dingadi, Interior, Rauf Aregbashola, and Foreign Affairs, jo Yofi Onyema. The attendees and the meetings are expected to brief the president on the current security situation across the country as well as profile solutions. Also, the president, Mamad Bari, has approved the establishment of a health sector reform committee to kick start the development and implementation of the health sector reform program for Nigeria in collaboration with state governments and the Federal Capital Territory Administration. This is as he appointed Vice President Yamil Shibaju as Chairman of the Committee and Dr. Ifedayo Adetifa as Director General of the Nigerian Center for Disease Control. Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media and Publicity, Garba Shehu, disclosed this in a statement on Monday titled, This comes after a health sector diagnostic review report developed by a consultant, Vesta Healthcare Partners and the Federal Ministry of Health. According to the statement, the committee will undertake a review of the healthcare reforms adopted in the past two decades and lessons learned and factor them into the development of the new health sector reform program. And moving on, Governor of Oyo State, Shay Makinde, has purchased all nomination forms for the forthcoming Congress of the People's Democratic Party in the state. Chairman of the party, Komi Mustafa, made this known in the communique issued in the end of the PDP caucus meeting held at Oyo State Government House, Agodi Ibadan. The party also endorsed the nomination of the State House of Assembly Speaker, Debo Ogundoin, and other members of the party as the 2021 Local Organizing Committee for the State Congresses. Moving on now, the Federal High Court in Ibadan Oya State Capital has commenced hearing in suit instituted against the federal government by the Yoruba Nation agitator, Sunday Adeyemo, popularly known as Sunday Boho. Adeyemo is seeking a 500 million naira compensation from the federal government following the raid on its Ibadan residents by the operative of the State Security Service, SSS. Sunday Boho, who is currently being detained in the Republic of Benin, has declared wanted by the federal government for illegal possession of arms and ammunition. Now, away from that, the understate government has shot Imperial Hotel located at a larger street in Ijakpo, area of Akure. The senior special assistant to Governor Rotemir Akeredalu on special duties, Doi or Debowali, disclosed this at a news conference in Akure. Thing. So they want to make money? Is this small boys, small girls? No, it's unacceptable. That place is short. To further notice them, let them respect the law of this state. I do know that we have a standing, you know, law which says that you must know the identity of whoever is coming to lodge in your facility. I know this, and I'm aware that in this state, we have not permitted anybody to take drugs. I'm aware of that. Call it anything, Colorado, call it uh, any name. 
Away from that, unknown gunmen have killed a policeman and the personnel of Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps NFCDC in Yenugua, the Bayausa state capital. The incident happened at a nipping point in the Kaki Junction area of Yenugua. Confirming the development, the public relations officer of the Bayelsa State Police Command, SP Asimin Buswat, said operative of the Joint Task Force, code name Operation Duako, came under heavy gunfire from unknown gunmen, but that they were engaged and repelled by the security agent. Meanwhile, Alamoa State Governor Ahmad Fintui said he is looking forward to the collapse of the All Progressive Congress, APC, in the state and the country at large. Fintiri said this in Yola when prominent APC towers defected to the People's Democratic Party. The governor said the defection of prominent politicians, including the former secretary to the Adamawa state government, Kobi Stimunu, marks the beginning of the unity of the PDP and collapse of the All Progressive Congress in the state and in the country. This day will mark the beginning of the collapse of all other political parties into PDP. And our umbrella, I assure you, is bigger than enough to accommodate all and sundry with the aim of reclaiming our mandate. I think we will continue to provide uh, good leadership, continue to provide and build the party uh, so that it will be very meaningful to the common man at the grassroots. I think uh, this is one of my concerns. And uh, particularly, uh, you cannot fight and checkmate the security situation without having this kind of leaders on board. Now, as part of efforts to tackle endemic corruption and fraudulent activities in Nigeria, a non-government organization has organized a town hall meeting on anti-corruption and promotion of good governance in Patakas, River State Capital. The NGO Wadata Media Advocacy, WAMAC, used local communities as change agent for the meeting on the fight against corruption. Our commitment to the promotion of good governance and promotion of accountability in this project and concept by Modata Media Advocacy Center and supported by the John D. and Catherine T. Makato Foundation is aimed at stepping into difficult terrain in the fight against corruption through investigative journalism and reportage. I'm advocating that there should be, uh, maybe education will help us. And I know that civics is, uh, is lost. Now we don't teach civics these days in our schools. And I think th those kind of uh, civic education should return. The community is not equipped. EFC Seaman talked about the languages, yes. But the community is not equipped. There's no capacity building at the community level to enable the community to help us in the fight against corruption. We must find a way to deal with the issue of failure of leadership in the country. I'm not saying it now. Chino Achebe said it long ago. The problem with Nigeria, he said, was leadership. But on our part, let's reinvent our communities. And that is where this program is most relevant. Let's still make our community money too unsafe for the local government chairman and the commissioner from our place to touch. If we are able to retain the ingredients of our community that made it what it used to be, we will be able to limit the impact of corruption on us from actions around us. Let it be things that are coming from levels that we cannot reach. Now the Lagos State Government says it will resume the year 2021-2022 academic session for public and private schools across the state on Monday 13 September 2021. Commissioner for Education Mrs. Folashade Adefisayo explained that the model colleges and upgraded school students would resume in parties from Sunday 19 September 2021. Adefisayo maintained that for the brothers in model colleges and upgraded schools, the SS2 students seeking placement into SS3 class would resume on Sunday, 19 September, and revision for this class would run from 20th to 26th September, while promotion examination to SS3 class will start from 27th September to 8th October 2021. Now, State the President Mohamed Bari also approved the appointment of Dr. Ifedayo Adetifa as a new Director General of Nigerian Center for Disease Control and CDC. Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media and Publicity, Gabashe, will disclose this in a statement on Monday. 
Dr. Adesi Fabriclix is former SDC Chief Chikwe Ihekwazo, who recently got a new job as the Assistant Director General of Health Emergency Intelligence at the World Health Organization. Coming up next is business news. Hello, welcome to Business News. I am Frank Omalape. And now the Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Mele Kiari, says the earliest the corporation can issue its initial public offer to investors is in the next three years. The NNPC boss disclosed this on Monday during an interview with Bloomberg TV panel in Shell News. Speaking on the impact of the Petroleum Industry Act on the NNPC, Kerry said the corporation will now be operated in line with the companies in Allied Art. However, he stated that the NNPC may not be able to offer its shares to the public by 2022 or 2023 due to certain bottlenecks that had lingered over the years. And in the meantime, Nigeria and other developing countries may lag behind over funding constraints as the global campaign over cleaner energy gains momentum. Secretary General of the Organization of Petroleum Sporting Countries, OPEC, Mohamed Sanusi Barikinda, gave the hint at the Ministerial Roundtable on Energy, Climate and Sustainable Development in Vienna, Austria. According to a report, about 15 trillion US dollars is the amount of money to be invested in new power capacity globally over the next three decades. Further analysis reveals that between 2022 and 2050, Another 14 trillion US dollars will be invested in the grid, likely to adapt it for a surge in solar and renewable power deployments, which, according to the analysis, will constitute 56% of total global generation capacity by 2050. Away from there now, civil society organizations on Monday condemned the Federal Inland Revenue Service over a decision to impose taxes on social media activities. The Federal Inland Revenue Service is currently seeking the approval of the National Assembly to further amend the Finance Act for the purpose of dragging online businesses and social media to a tax net. The chairman of the agency, Mohamed Nani, has stated this during an ongoing engagement between the Senate Joint Committees working on the medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper and heads of revenue generating agencies of the federal government. And now the Debt Management Office has opened the September savings bond offer to investors. The DMO stated this in a circular on Monday that it is offering the federal government's two-year and three-year saving bonds. According to the circular published on its website, the two-year federal government savings bond will be due for redemption on September 15, 2023 at 7.9% per annum, while the three-year offer will be due on September 15, 2024, at 8.9% per annum. According to the circular, the bonds qualify as securities in which trustees can invest under the Trustee Investment Act and as a liquid asset for liquidity ratio calculation for banks. And now, Stambi Kaibetis Holdings PLC has announced a 50.1% drop in profit for half year ended June 30, 2021. I mean, weak gross earnings and hike in total operating expenses. The group profit for first half of 2021 dropped to two or 22.54 billion naira from 45.2 billion naira reported in the first half of 2020. Stambik IBTC Holdings in its audited resulting account release to the Nigerian Exchange Limited yesterday also reported. Uh, a 52.9% drop in profit before tax to 24.71 billion naira in the first half of 2021 from 52.4 billion reported in the first half of 2020. Despite reporting a drop in profit, the management proposed an interim dividend of one naira per ordinary share of 50 kobo rich, that is 12.96 billion naira. And on the African scene now, British Airways has resumed at Nairobi London flights, bringing to an end a dispute that has lasted nearly five months over the management of COVID-19 pandemic. The airline said Monday that the first flight departed Jomo Kenyatta International Airport at uh, around 11 
uh, on Sunday, landing in London at around 6.15 hours on September 6th. The airline charges an average fare of 171,000 shillings for a return air ticket to London from Nairobi, which is slightly higher than the fare before the COVID-19 pandemic. He says it will fly on the route once per week down from daily flight, uh, flights rather it was operating pre-pandemic. And now the ShopRite Group has reported a strong set of results with its gross profit margin improving by 55 basis points to 24.5 percent. It checkers business grew sales in South Africa by almost 11 percent in the past one year to a full July with more than 1.5 million downloads of it checkers 60 60 delivery service up. ShopRite and you save increased sales by 8.8% in South Africa, while the furniture segment increased six by almost 25% as consumers continue to spend on furniture and electronics, the company said. Across the group, ShopRite saw its sales increase by 8.1% to 168 billion rands as weak currencies weighed on sales from other African countries. And it's time to flip to foreign scene now. Mosation stocks rose Tuesday as Japan extended the rally and traders took heart from indications that the global recovery is weathering challenges from the Delta virus variant. Japan's Nikkei 225 hit 30,000 for the first time since April as an index reshuffle added to optimism that a new prime minister will usher in favorable policies. S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 futures edged up ahead of a resumption in U.S. market after a holiday. Global shares are at, at a record overcoming concerns that the Delta strain is hampering economic reopening and exacerbating supply snails that are fueling inflation. And now oil prices were mixed on Tuesday in quiet trade as some investors cooped up. Baggins following the recent losses while growing fears over slower demand after Saudi Arabia's sharp cuts to crude contracts prices for Asia weighed on sentiment. Brent crude futures for November rose 31 cents or about 0.4 percent to $72 barrel in early trade after failing, uh, falling down to around by 39 cents on Monday. U.S. Texas intermediate crude for October was $69. 14 cent a barrel down 15 cent or 0.2 percent from Friday's close with no sentiment uh, price for Monday due to Labor Day holiday in the United States. Markets are also contending with a decision by the OPEC plus to raise output by 400,000 barrels per day a month between August and December. Well, and that's all with business news at this time. Many thanks for watching. I am Frank Omalape. Is back to you now. Thank you, Frank. Now we'll take the spot news. And in sport business, George Ruzel confirmed as Lewis Hamilton's 2022 teammate as a joint Mercedes on a long term contract. Vuzel, which 23, has been a Mercedes junior driver since 2017 and finally got his chance after three seasons in F1 with Williams. George Vuzel will join Mercedes at Lewis Hamilton's next team meet with the world champions confirming their all-British 2022 driver lineup. And in his chance with the team, will first sign him as a junior driver before supporting his three brilliant seasons in F1 with Williams. Vuzel will be Hamilton's sixth and the youngest teammate in the sport. Mercedes said Roussel had signed a long-term contract with the team. He replaced Valtteri Bottas, who is moving to Alfa Romeo with five seasons with Mercedes. And also the UEFA has announced signing a groundbreaking partnership with Brin to become an official partner of the UEFA Europa League and the newly formed UEFA Europa Conference League for the next three seasons. Guy Laurent, SPN. UEFA marketing director said we are delighted to have secured Win as the first ever official sport betting partner for one of our competitions at of 
at official partner level. As a brand that defines itself by being in touch with fans and their passion for football and club throughout Europe, Bruin is a great fit for our competitions. Bruin becomes official partner of the European League and European Conference League. The partnership with Bruin allows UEFA to engage more openly with sports betting sector, giving a greater access to market intelligence and support from both a sports integrity and a commercial perspective. Now up next with entertainment business news. Kanye West has hit lucky number seven with his tenth number one album. His latest Donda has debuted at the top of Billboard's top 300 album chart, making him the seventh artist to have 10 number one albums according to Billboard. With 309,000 equivalent album units and in the US, Donda is the biggest album debut of the year so far, surpassing Olivia Rodingo's tour. West's album has been eagerly awaited, coming after listening events in different cities. Released August 29, the album racked up more than 775 million global streams with more than 442 million on Spotify and 242 million on Apple Music worldwide, according to the record label. And that wraps it up for our news now. At this hour, for more news stories, please visit our website and follow all of our social media platforms. My name is Margaret Opera. Thanks for watching.